Our mass presider today is Reverend Father Ronnie Chrysostomo SVD, Rector of the Shrine. Our celebration will now begin. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. The Church rejoices today with the celebration of the memorial of the great saint, famous saint, Saint Padre Pio of Pietrelcina, priest, Capuchin priest who dedicated his life as a spiritual director, confessor, who received the uh, singular gift of uh, what we call the stigmata, sharing the wounds of Christ, and uh, many other gifts, and uh, a very uh, known saint, in our times and he continues to help us help people in need the sick with his prayers and intercessions let us thank god praise god for such a gift of uh, to his church saint uh, padre pio and to celebrate worthily this eucharist we ask god's mercy and pardon You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest Saint Pius of Pietrelcina a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry, renew the wonders of your mercy. Grant through his intercession that we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the beginning of the book of the prophet Haggai. On the first day of the sixth month, 
in the second year of King Darius, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to the governor of Judah, Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, and to the high priest Joshua, son of Jehozadak. Thus says the Lord of hosts, These people says, The time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then this word of the Lord came through Haggai, the prophet. Is it time for you to dwell in your own paneled houses while this house lies in ruins? Now thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. You have sown much, but have brought in little. You have eaten, but have not been satisfied. You have drunk, but have not been exhilarated. Have clothed yourselves, but not been warmed. And whoever earned wages, earned them for a bag with holes in it. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Go up into the hill country. Bring timber and build the house, that I may take pleasure in it and receive my glory, says the Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord takes delight in his people. The Lord takes delight in his people. Sing to the Lord a new song of praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in their Maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their King. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let them praise his name in the festive dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord loves his people, and he adorns the lowly with victory. The Lord takes delight in his people. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy upon their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats. This is the glory of all his faithful. Alleluia. The Lord takes delight in his people. Please stand to honor the Holy Gospel. <coughs> from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the Tetrarch heard about all that was happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has a reason. But Herod said, John, I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. Dear friends, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed day, a blessed evening to all of you. 
those who are joining us through this uh, live stream celebration of the Mass here at the Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word. As I used to do in, during these weekdays that I uh, focus the reflection on the first reading. Today, uh, we continue to uh, meditate on the readings readings that are taken from the so-called uh, post-exile writings meaning around uh, the 5th or 6th century before Christ after the exile of the, the people of God from Babylon there were several writings and one of them we have heard today that of the prophet Haggai and one of the chief concerns of these writings several writings the so-called post-exile writings is the reconstruction of the temple of Jerusalem which when they returned from Babylon it was in ruin and that was the concern of, uh, of uh, these writers. Now, one of the concerns, main concerns, because there, there was this idea that uh, the temple, that God must have a temple. Now. And uh, in today's reading, the Hebrew people started to reconstruct the temple of Jerusalem after their Babylonian exile it is precisely to this enterprise which continues very slowly that Haggai the prophet we have heard today dedicates his preaching his first preaching in fact about the reconstruction of uh, this Jerusalem temple the prophet Haggai in a, a fairly simple words plain words lashes out against the lack of passion or inertia of the leaders of the community in this rebuilding no? It passed already according to the first reading two years after their arrival and they were moving so slowly no so the prophet Haggai preached against them their stinginess of these returnees they were not very generous and they were not very committed in the reconstruction of the temple which according to historians would be completed only after five years that's why we hear the uh, the preaching of uh, Haggai today a bit uh, harsh in his uh, in his words against this lack of commitment of the people in the reconstruction of uh, the temple. The appeal of the prophet Haggai, therefore, is transformed into a kind of a critique to their egoism and exaggerated individualism against excessive privatization and the narrowing of their social horizons which is also our experience in the contemporary society the words of the prophet interrogate us believers of the quality of our sense of community and of our fraternal relationships what can we learn from this 
on the concern of the prophet for the reconstruction of the temple. Does God really need a temple? As a young religious priest preparing uh, for the missions, I remember that uh, uh, we were uh, reminded very often by our formators in that missionary work is not primarily about building construction but they insisted on the formation of a vibrant Christian communities. The thinking is that even if you have beautiful buildings, churches, but if you have a lousy community, if you do not have committed Christians, what's that for? No. So the uh, emphasis uh, they had the uh, brain was us now going to mission it is not your task they said no to be builders of physical temples or churches primarily our mission is to form communities vibrant communities but uh, my experience too in working in the missions, particularly in Argentina, that uh, although this is not, the construction is not the main concern, but as the com I observed that as a community, Christian community grows and matures, and as the people see their material needs, for example, of the community, for uh, a church, a chapel, and this community start to form and build their own. And I observe that when a community that is formed well, it's easier to launch projects such as construction, physical construction for for their needs in fact i saw that such projects strengthen the members of the community in their relationship with each other and uh, becomes their projects becomes a manifestation of their maturity as a christian community that's why on the one hand, yes, it is true that uh, the, uh, the emphasis is on the community, but also on the other hand, there, as the community matures, they would produce, they would have, would see their need for such beautiful temples, churches, as a testimony also of their unity and of their mature faith. Does God really need a temple? A house in our midst? Strictly speaking, God being a spirit, I think doesn't need a temple. The whole creation is His. Is his. But we limited creatures are the ones in need, I think, of particular places, particular times as markers and reminders of our need to encounter God. So temples, church buildings, chapels, days, special occasions like Sundays, Christmas, etc. are signposts to remind us of our vocation and need to be in communion with God and with one another. In the final analysis, God's insistence of the rebuilding of the, Jeru the temple in Jerusalem 
through the prophets. He is for the people and not for him primarily. God wishes to remind us of our calling to be in communion with him and with our fellow followers. The temple, the church, is a symbol of our vocation to communion. May we grow in our awareness and our commitment to, uh, towards communion, towards unity as followers of God. And when there is, as I've said, vibrant Christian community, it is easier to pursue projects like building monuments that would help us or temples that would help us grow in our communion with each other and with God. May the Lord who has called us as his children grow in our desire towards communion, towards communion with him and towards our communion with each other. And that is what the temple, the church stands for, that we are called to communion, to unity as children of God. We are aware that there is much evil in the world because Jesus has overcome evil by his death and resurrection. We ask God that goodness may be victorious. For every petition, let our response be, let your light shine on us, Lord. Let your light shine on us, Lord. That the pilgrim church may inspire people to renew their lives by faithfully bearing witness to Christ in word and deed. We let, pray. Let, let your light, light shine, shine on us, us Lord. Lord. That nations may give up the senseless race to have more powerful weapons of war, and that they instead learn to live together in harmony and peace. We pray. Let, Let your light shine, shine on, on us, O Lord. Lord. That those who are persecuted because of their beliefs may succeed in winning their freedom. We pray. Let your Let light shine, shine on us, Lord. That the sick and the handicapped may receive the comfort of God's love from those engaged in caring for them. We pray. Let, Let your, your light, light shine, shine on us, Lord. That those who have died may be freed from the troubles of this world and enjoy everlasting peace. We pray. Let, Let your, your light, light shine, shine on us, Lord. We pray for our other intentions. We pray, let, let your, your light shine, shine on us, Lord. God, our Father, keep healing us from all evil, and let your goodness shine in us by the power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. See you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, our sacrifice, our prayers, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of Blessed Padre Pio de Pre of Pietrelcina, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, true Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of Saint Padre Pio, you bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Honest to our bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially those we remember in this holy mass. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him O God Almighty Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit all glory and honor is yours forever and ever Amen with gratitude and joy in our hearts we now address our Heavenly Father our, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy, thy name thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven, heaven. give us this day our daily bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior jesus christ for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever lord jesus christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We offer to one another Christ peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Let us pray. May, partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high. In all, we celebrate the feast of blessed Padre Pio de Pietrelcina, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oratio Imperata. Merciful, Merciful and, and compassionate, compassionate Father, Father, we come, we come to, to you in our need to seek, seek your protection, protection against, against the COVID-19 
that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and the whole world. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all these through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities. Deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque, pray, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray, pray for us. Saint Padre Pio de Pietrelcina, pray, pray for us. Saint Arnold Jansen and Joseph Rain Adamets, pray, pray for, for us. us. Please be seated for some announcement. The shrine is now open for mass goers at 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. on Sundays and 6 p.m. on weekdays. Kindly bring your vaccination cards. Those who are fully vaccinated will be allowed inside, while the others may stay in front of the shrine where they can attend the mass. Please follow the minimum safety protocols of wearing face mask and face shield and maintaining physical distance from one another. Thank you for your cooperation. Reverend Father Ronnie Chrysostom, SVD, Shrine Rector. Malala ko pala, malapit ng magtapos ng September, yung mga hindi pa naka-register na pwedeng bumoto, ay mayroon pa tayong pitong araw. So, take note so that we can exercise our rights as citizens of the Philippines to choose worthy leaders. That is part of our vocation and responsibility as Christians to elect well our leaders. So, yung mga kagaya ko na hindi pa nakatransfer ng kanilang registration we have seven days to to do this our no remember no wag tayong mag mag complain ng mga leaders na mayroon tayo kung hindi natin naman we do not exercise our right of and responsibility of electing our leaders so uh, Sa lahat paalala-ala, sa lahat na hindi pa nakapag-register na at pwede naman bumoto, lalong-lalo na yung mga matagal nang hindi nakaboto dahil uh, kagaya ko na wala dito nag, uh, or uh, nag-change of residence, it is our opportunity, it is our responsibility to uh, register and vote part of our christian responsibility obligation the lord be with you 
and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, your loved ones, your work and activities, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Thank mm -hmm. you.